Aonde estamos? Olha, estamos no meio da selva. Agora são é, algumas horas depois que a gente chegou. Muito trabalho, fizemos um acampamento legal. Pegamos um, uns peixes para fazer o churrasco. E agora vamos pernoitar aqui e esperar ver mais vida selvagem, tipo anaconda, jaguar, macacos da noite que chupa o pescoço. Então, agora é só a selva. Pura escuridão. <risos> There are certain places on this planet that seem almost like fiction. Unreachable destinations that you expect to only see in storybooks and documentaries. The Amazon rainforest in northern Brazil was one of those places for me. Like Machu Picchu and losing my virginity, at one point, they all seemed unattainable. My Amazon experience began in the gateway city of Manaus, where the journey into the jungle proved to be a task unto itself. I took a taxi from the airport down to the city's main harbor. It was here that I had my first glimpse of the incredible size and scope of the Amazon River on ground level. I crossed the river on a small shuttle boat, passing the point where the Rio Negro converges with the Amazon, which forms a really cool color and temperature divide in the water. Once on the other side, I passed street vendors selling giant fish and wild fruits before boarding an old VW wagon. Got ourselves some snacks for the road. Past the small towns and giant lily pads, we drove further away from civilization before making one last transfer into a small motorboat in the middle of nowhere. Right. Here we go. Into the Amazon we go. As we weave through the flooded forest, the reality of this moment started to set in. After another half hour in the boat, the river opened up and I could see my final destination. The Ararinha Jungle Hotel would serve as a launching pad for all my rainforest activities. It's a small property carved into the tree line with multiple private lodges, a large mess hall, and abundance of visitors. After a quick look around, I dropped my bag off and returned to the water to meet up with my local guide. Kenrick, or Jungle Boy as he's known, was born and raised in the region and would be in charge of keeping me alive over the next week. And just like that, it was time to go explore the wild Amazon. By day, we cruised through the river and trekked into the rainforest. In the water, we looked out for exotic birds, hidden lizards, and even the rare pink dolphins. And on land, it was giant spiders, poison dart frogs, and all types of monkeys. Such a monkey. While the rare anaconda and jaguar were always in the back of my mind, it was the smaller animals that you really had to be aware of. The craziest aspect of the trip was that I was never completely comfortable. There was a constant level of tension because of the respect Kendrick and the other guides had for their surroundings. Okay. The whole thing was an incredible juxtaposition as we would go catch piranhas in the shallow waters and then boat out to the middle of the river nearby to go swimming. It was a dangerous and beautiful place and my senses were heightened at all times. Throughout the process, Kenrick and the other guides taught me some much needed skills and techniques for surviving in the jungle. From making weapons, to building shelters, to finding the best things to eat if you're hungry. There's a seed into this jelly, and 
oh, mm, the yeah. jelly. The, oh, yeah. So it's an egg that turns into this larva, oh. which is rich in proteins. Tastes like coconut. Another side of life in this section of the Amazon was the close-knit community of people who live along the river. I had the opportunity to meet and interact with many local residents, and despite the remote location, life here seems relatively normal, and it comes with an alluring simplicity and self-sufficiency. One morning, we visited a local farm who were in the middle of cultivating the popular Brazilian staple farinha, or farofa. They showed us how to transform the poisonous root into an edible side dish through a pretty meticulous process. And I even popped my top to try to help out for a little bit. <laughs> On another day, we were invited into a house party with some of the off-duty guides and surrounding neighbors. It was great to see what life was like on a Friday night with people my age in the Amazon. This game of penalties here is for five cases of beer. And what else? A hundred and thirty smackaroos and five cases of beer. And more important, his spit. You get the respect. Later in the evenings, when sensible locals would turn in, we'd launch the boat again and head out to explore the darkness. Thankfully, one of the easiest things to spot at night were the caimans, whose beady red eyes would surface across the top of the river. And apparently, if you're fast and quiet enough, you can reach down into the water and grab one. <laughs> the days pass, and I grew more and more addicted to this life. So on my final day in the Amazon, we decided to take a small crew out to get the full effect of the jungle by camping out. So it begins. We've arrived at our destination for our evening in the jungle. We found a flat, dry space not far from the river and worked quickly to set up camp before dark. We chopped trees for a tarp frame, cautiously gathered firewood, and began cooking dinner over the fire. Our campsite is set. We have mosquito nets, hammocks, blue tarp. The fire has been started. We're ready to have a night in the jungle. As darkness and a little paranoia set in, we enjoyed dinner and drinks to the developing sounds around us. We listened to music, played cards, made hats out of palm branches, and of course, peed close by. And as the homemade moonshine, appropriately called Coco Loco, flowed, we stayed up and shared stories well into the night. Made it through the night in the jungle. What's up, man? Bom, graças a Deus aqui é acampamento muito bom. Não tem mosquito. Muito ótimo. After an incredible breakfast with fresh fruit, eggs, and coffee, it was time for me to pack up and head back to Manaus. And although I spent a week engulfed in this incredible place, the people, the wildlife, the environment, everything still made the Amazon seem like fiction to me. It was like no place I've ever been, and hopefully a place that I can get back to soon. Until next time, travel deeper. Oh.